Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to the YouTube channel. In this video, let's look at how to write UI tests using the framework Cypress. Cypress is a next generation front end testing tool built for the modern web. Cypress enables us to write tests faster, easier and ones that are more reliable. Cypress makes setting up, writing, running and debugging tests amazingly simple. Setting up tests is quite easy with Cypress. You can write your first passing test within 60 seconds. There are no servers, drivers or any other dependencies to be installed or configured to run Cypress. Tests written in Cypress are easy to read and understand. The API uses the existing tools that we are already familiar with. Cypress runs the tests as fast as the browser can render the content. You can watch the tests run and also step through each of the application state. Cypress provides readable error messages which helps you to debug quickly. And also you have the full access to the developer tools that you are used to and love. A few other game changer features are time travel, real time reloads, consistent results, control over network tracker and my personal best is automatic waiting. No more adding weights or sleeps to the tests and praying with fingers crossed for it to work. Cypress is most often compared to Selenium. However, Cypress is both fundamentally and architecturally different. Cypress is not constrained by the same restrictions as Selenium. This enables you to write faster, easier and more reliable tests. Cypress is a desktop application that's installed on your computer. It is available as an NPM package and install it under your application folder. Let's get started and install Cypress and write a few tests. In this video, we will mostly explore ways of setting up data for Cypress and how quickly you can mock the data that you need to write your tests. Here we have a quotes application that helps us manage quotes. We can add a quote and also see the existing quotes in the application. The quotes can be of different statuses like draft, open, etc. And when it lists, it shows in different colors and also the details of the quotes based on the state it is in. Let's see how we can write a few tests using Cypress for this application. Heading off to Visual Studio Code, we have a mock API which we built in the previous application. If you didn't watch that video, please check out the link here or in the description below. We have the UI which is a create react application. Let's get started and install Cypress under the UI folder. Head off to the command prompt and run npm install Cypress and save dev. Once Cypress is installed, let's head off to package.json and add a task to run Cypress. I have added a Cypress script which opens the Cypress CLI. This is the desktop application that we were talking about earlier. Let's head back to the command prompt and run Cypress. This starts the desktop application and since it's running it for the first time, it creates automatically the Cypress folder and also a few example tests and fixture data that we will see in a while. Since we are not interested in these example tests, let's remove them from coming up in our test window. To do that, let's head back to the source code and add a cypress.json file and add in the configuration that's required for Cypress. Here I'm saying the base URL of the application is going to be in localhost 3000, which is the same as what our React application is running under. And we also specify to ignore the test files that's falling under the examples folder. After adding the cypress.json file, we can see those example test files do not appear here anymore. So let's start adding some tests for our application. We'll create a new folder, quotes, because that's where all our tests are going to live. To write tests in TypeScript, let's enable TypeScript for Cypress. To do that, you need to install TypeScript and also configure a tsconfig.json file. Since I'm already using the TypeScript variant of the Create React application, I can safely skip this step. Let's copy this and add in a tsconfig.json file under the Cypress folder. I'm also a huge fan of the Cypress testing library, which enables us to write more readable tests. So let's install that as well before we start writing any tests. To install the Cypress testing library, we need to add a new package, which is a testing library slash Cypress. I have installed the package for Cypress testing library. So let's update the types and also make sure I have it referenced under the command.js. So that's Cypress support and command.js and add in the import. Once that's all set up, let's go back to our test and start writing the first test 
For the first test, let's make sure everything is set up appropriately. So codes application loads and we can write a test using the common it pattern that we are familiar, we are all familiar to. To start using Cypress, all you need to use is the CY. So once you have CY and then you have different functions, we can just give the relative path here since in the cypress.json, we have already specified the base URL. On save, it starts running the test. Currently, it's hitting the mock API, which is why we see the data that's coming back. For this test, let's assert that the old code text and the create button is shown. Using the CY, we can say find by text and pass in the old codes. The moment we save, Cypress reruns the test. You can see that it is actually highlighting the codes which we asserted on. We could also assert on the button using the CY and say find by text create code. There are different ways of selecting and verifying these elements. So check out the Cypress best practices and see the selecting elements to see what they are. I'll put a link for all of these in the description below. Now we have Cypress up and running. Like I promised, we did this almost under a minute, except for the NPM install time. This is how quickly we can start writing tests. However, in this case, I had a mock API running, which enabled me to populate data much easier. In the normal case, you might be hitting a real API and you might want to start mocking data because you don't have control over what data is coming from the real API. So let's see few of the techniques that we can use to mock the data for Cypress test. Mostly there are three ways you can mock data for a Cypress test. You can use either an in-memory object to specify the data, or you can use a fixture file, or you can use a mock API like I'm using in this case. Let's explore these three different options. So let's start with the in-memory object. So I'll add a quotes.inmemory.spec.ts file. Before we start mocking data, let's look at two of the important things that we need to understand to mock data and how Cypress can be set up to do that. The cypress.server command starts a server and enables us to intercept the network request and change their behavior. Along with the cypress.server, we need to use the cypress.route method to specify what requests that we need to modify. We'll be mostly using these two methods in the tests that we're going to write to mock the data. So let's head back to the test file and see this in action. I have the basic outline for the test file. In this case, I'm going to use the inline data. So let's assume we want to test the case where there's no quotes getting displayed and there's an empty display message. We need to start the server so that we can start intercepting the request. If we open up the network tab and refresh these tests, we can see there's a call going to API slash quotes. This is what is returning the data. So we need to mock this call and return an empty object in this case. Let's see how we can use the in-memory object to do that. In this case, we are looking at the get HTTP request to the slash API slash quotes endpoint. So we are explicitly saying when it matches this route, return me an empty array. So this is the in-memory object that we are talking about. This could also be a list of quotes or anything else depending on your scenario. Once that's set up, let's call the cy.visit again on the base URL. Let's close that and start running the in-memory spec. So that starts this test and it's visiting the endpoint. So you can see that the slash API slash quotes is now returning an empty array. So it does show a default message which says there are no matching quotes. Very quickly, we have set up the mock response for that API and we have started testing the scenario where there's no data, even without modifying any of our APIs. We can go and make sure, find by text and expect that there are no matching quotes is getting displayed and the test pass successfully. I also have a data.cy attribute in this case. If I inspect this element, I can see there is a data.cy attribute which I had added explicitly for the Cypress test. So I could also verify that exists using the get and verifying that node exists. If I was to hover over that, I can see the exact element that it has targeted. If I click this, Cypress also shows me more details about that element in the console window. Now we have seen how we can use an in-memory object. This could be replaced by a list of quotes or single quote to populate the data as you require. Let's add in a new file for the fixture test. So let's call this quotes.fixture.spec.ts. Fixtures are external JSON files which has the data that we are interested in. So we have a fixtures file. We already have an examples.json here, but let's create a new file for the quotes. 
we can call this quotes.json. I have some data already written which gives back a list of quote summaries. If you have an existing API running, you can intercept the network request and get the data from there and put into this file and start writing test. So you have a fixed state of the data when you are asserting on something. Make sure to strip out any sensitive information when you capture information from the real running API. So once we have the quotes.json fixture file added, let's head back to the fixture spec and start writing our tests. So let's again use cypress.server because we want to start mocking the data and call cypress.fixture method which helps us to load data from the JSON file that we have written. This expects a string path which is relative to the fixture folder. Since we have it in the root folder under the fixture folder, we can refer it using quotes.json and use an aliasing so that we can use it in our test. Quotes.json file is now available as an aliased quotes option for us to use in the test. Like before, let's go and modify the request so that we can modify the method and specify get and on the slash api slash quotes call and pass in the fixture. To refer the aliased fixture, let's use at and pass in the name of that, which starts loading up the data from there. Let's see if this is running as expected. Let's close this and run the fixture.spec.ts and we'll need to also write the cy.visit and specify the base URL. Sorry, this is not request. This needs to be route to intercept like we saw before. And this starts showing data from a fixture file. I had just three data coming from the API, but now we have five, which is also accepted, open and expired status. We could go and check the color of a certain status is as expected. So let's say for draft, this shows up the RGB 128, 128 and 128. We can also intercept the data coming from the fixture and use that in our test. For example, let's say if we want to test the number of rows rendered here is equal to the number of code summaries that we have in the fixture. Let's add in a new test that I have already written, which uses the fixture and it loads up the quotes. We can then use the then method where we can intercept the quotes and start writing the test inside that. Here I'm again visiting the root URL and verifying the number of rows is the same as the length that's coming from quotes. The test is passing in this case. It expects a five and it sees a five rows that's rendered here. So here we have actually gone and intercepted the fixture and started reading the data that's coming from the fixture file. Let's head over to the third option. That's the quotes mock API. So let's expand this a bit and add in a new file for the quotes dot mock API. In a previous video, we had seen how to set up JSON server mock API. That is what I'm using for this test. We also saw how to set up different scenarios in JSON server so that you can load up data as you want. For example, I can load in this UI based on the data that I want. So let's assume I want the application to be in a state where there are no quotes. So I can head off here to the plus and specify no quotes. Under the hood is sending a HTTP header with a certain keyword which the JSON server is matching and returning back data. If you want to learn how to set up this for your frontend application, check out the video that's linked here and in the description below. I could also specify different scenarios like error which shows up a toast message. Let's see how we can use this mock server API and write test in Cypress. So I have the base structure set up. So let's start writing the test. Let's test this an error case scenario where it shows the toast pop up. If you've seen my previous video on setting up the API, we saw that we need to pass these scenarios using an HTTP header. So to set up request headers for every request, we can add in a custom command in here. So what we expect to do is add in a cy.setScenarios method where we can specify the scenarios that we are interested in. So in this case, I am interested in the error quotes, which will return an error for the quotes API endpoint. To set this up, I need to write a custom command. You can add a custom command under the Cypress support folder. In the index.js file, we can add our own commands. I already have a set scenarios command, which accepts a string and writes that as the selected scenario group to the local storage. The application already has code in the HTTP.ts, which reads it and injects it for the header. To add TypeScript support for this, we'll need to add a new file index.d.ts and add in the TypeScript structure for our command. So here I'm specifying that the set scenarios takes in a string and it's of type chainable element from the Cypress. I'll put a link to the repository in case you want to refer back to these code. 
So let's save these, go back, mock API spec file, and we can see this no longer throws an error, and we have the type check also happening here. Since I'm hitting the mock API, I don't have to set up the server or any of the routes that we set in the other test. So I'll visit, and I need to verify that I have a toast element, which is represented by the toastify. So I use the toastify library to show the toast. So I'm expecting it has a class, which is toastify. You could also check for the text that comes up in the toast and which reads unable to get quotes data. So let's run this test and run the mock API test, which is now going to invoke the API. But since it says it needs an error scenario, it's going to return an API quote, which is an error. Since I've missed a full stop, it's not matching exactly. So let's add that in and run this test again. And this time it passes. We can generate different scenarios here. So for instance, I can remove these and set the scenarios to no quotes, which will start giving me an empty list of quotes. I could specify nothing. It returns me back all the data that it has. I could even specify things like draft and phone, and it re returns back only quotes which has draft and phone coming back. We are able to use the fake API that we set up and use that here to generate and simulate different scenarios and test them. To recap, we have seen how we can easily set up Cypress and start writing tests for our applications. Mocking data makes it very easy to start up and not having to depend on your real APIs. The easiest would be to use the in-memory or the fixture where you can capture requests from the existing API and reuse it here in the test. Hope this helps you to get started with Cypress and start writing tests for your front-end applications. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. And if you want to be notified of future such videos, please hit the subscribe. Thank you.